السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته My dear brothers and sisters At this reminder of this week I would like all of us to think differently Because Allah wanted us to think outside the box Not inside Allah doesn't want us to think every day About what's happening and feel stressed and the best. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us in the Quran in Surah Al-Baqarah ayah number 216 والله يعلم وأنتم لا تعلمون. And you may dislike something and it is good for you. And you may love something and it is not good for you. Allah knows and you don't know. Indeed, the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said in Hadith Anas. Ibn Malik, may Allah be pleased with him. He said, radiallahu anhuma, he said, inna idham al jazai min idham al bala. Wa inna Allah azza wa jal idha ahabba qawman ibtalahum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he give people test. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that the amount and the size of the reward will be reflecting the size of the test. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He loves certain people, Allah tests them. And He said at the same hadith as well, فَمَنْ رَضِيَ فَلَهُ الرِّضَى وَمَنْ سَخِطَ فَلَهُ السَّخْطِ Meaning that whoever accepts the decision of Allah, the qadr of Allah, then he will be pleased and he will be in comfort and cool down and quiet and in control and will be active, active, positive and productive. فَمَنْ رَضِيَ فَلَهُ الرِّضَى Whoever accept the qadr of Allah, Allah will make him happy and Allah will give him the strength and calmness and tranquility and whoever reject the qadr of Allah then this person will be rejected so we need Allah to accept us we accepted that test from Allah we accepted the trial that Allah putting us at this moment we can't go to the mosque we cannot go to work we cannot go to schools we can't go to universities and we cannot do the things that we used to do. And now we are locked at home most of the time. People go, only key workers, key workers, may Allah bless them all, and when it is necessary. But I want to give you this hadith that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam told us about. It's an amazing hadith. And he said, Atani Jibreel Faqal. Atani Jibreel Faqal. Jibreel alayhi salam, the angel. May Allah be, be, be pleased with him. And all the blessing of Allah upon Jibreel alayhi salam. He said, Ya Muhammad, O Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi salam. Ish ma shit fa inna ka mayyitun. Wa ahbib man shit fa inna ka mufariqoh. Wa amal ma shit fa inna ka mujzabih. Wa alam. أن شرف المؤمن قيامه بالليل وعزه استغناؤه عن الناس. He said in this hadith, يا محمد أو محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم, live as much as you want, as long as you want. But remember, you will leave this world one day, you will die one day, and love whoever you want. And remember, you will leave them one day, and do whatever you wish to do. But remember, Allah will ask you about it and Allah will judge you about it. And you need to know 
that the honor of the mu'min, his honor and dignity, comes from his prayer at night, when there is no one there, secret prayers, no congregation prayers anymore, no going to the mosque anymore, but we can pray between us and Allah. وَعِزُّهُ إِسْتِغْنَاءُهُ عَنِ النَّاسِ And his dignity, his honor is a prayer at night. And his dignity is his independency. Independency. He to be independent from others. Not rely on others, but rely on Allah first. And then his own, his own hard work. His own production, his own knowledge, his own wisdom, his own work, his own contribution. Not to be sitting, panicking, and being lazy or careless, but to do things. And the mu'min, al-mu'min la yajaz, mu'min doesn't feel, the believer never feel useless or hopeless. Always do something. And now it's time for doing online work. Time to teach online. Time to actually, and this is the good thing that Allah wanted us to see. The beauty of this test is Allah bring people together. People say they don't know actually where to find things in their kitchen. Now they know. People now do, they do cooking for their families. They never did. Husband and wife, their relationship become closer and stronger. Brothers and sisters, they became like friends, working together, talking together, discussing together, debating together. It's like team working together. Family values become emphasized and confirmed. And single people are close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They find time to reflect and do their own ibadah and prayers. So this time is important time that you feel missing people, so you phone them, you call them, you contact them online. You feel missing your parents, you feel missing your close friends, and then you contact them. This is, this is the time that where we can look at so many beautiful things. Many people, they, don't have, they didn't have time, they didn't have time before to do things. Now you have lots of time to do things, indeed. So many people, they needed the time to be sitting alone, to, to relax, to reflect, to, to read Quran. Some people used to say, I, I have only little time to read Quran because they are key workers or they work so hard and long shifts. Now this is the time for them to really use it. This is golden opportunity indeed. Indeed. Brothers and sisters, this is also bring lots of knowledge to us. Many people, key workers, they combine prayers. Key workers, they do things that not like people sitting at home because the nature of their job and the services that they do for the society. May Allah bless them all. Brothers and sisters, it's interesting that we are in the month of Sha'ban. We are the first third almost of the month of Sha'ban gone. And now we are facing close to the middle of the month of Sha'ban. The month that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to fast a lot. The month that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that he loves to do fasting in it so his deeds will be presented to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala while he's fasting. And that's annual presentation to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. This is the month that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to fast, to fast a lot. And he said that this is the month that not many people mindful and careful about it or aware of its important indeed. This is the month that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned something important about the middle night, the Muntasaf of Sha'ban, the middle night of Sha'ban, that he said that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala look at the hearts of the creation. Allah look at the hearts of his servants. Allah look at the heart's condition, the heart's status, all the servants, all the worshippers, all people. And Allah look at their hearts on the night of the middle of Sha'ban. 
the 9th of 15th of Sha'ban. And this is Hadith Sahih, and this is the only Sahih Hadith in this topic. There are so many other Hadith not authentic, but this is the only authentic Hadith under this topic, and I'm sharing this with you. And this Hadith narrated by Mu'ad ibn Jabal, radiallahu anhu, may Allah be pleased with him. Mu'ad, the son of Jabal. And he said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, يَطْلُعُ اللَّهُ إِلَىٰ خَلْقِهِ فِي لَيْلَةِ النَّصْفِ مِنْ شَعْبَانِ فَيَغْفِرُ لِجَمِيعِ خَلْقِهِ إِلَّا لِمُشْرِكٍ أَوْ مُشَاحٍ And this hadith rawah ibn Majah wa ibn Hibban. Imagine, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the middle of Shaaban, and this coming after a few nights, Allah will see and look at all the hearts of all the creation. All people, all the human, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive everyone except the mushrik, the one who associates something with Allah or somebody with Allah. So we need to have pure iman, pure tawheed, monotheism, pure our life, our death, our work, our ibadah to be for Allah and only for the sake of Allah. Sincerely. 100%. And subhanallah, our mushahin, he said also mushahin, those one that they have enmity, those one who have dispute, those, have, those one who have ill feeling against others, or feeling of revenge, or feeling bad feeling about others. Ah, Allah will not accept and forgive those one. So this is also indicating and inviting us to settle our issues in family issues, husband and wife, brothers and sisters, friends, community members, everyone. Settle things, come back pure and clear to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, forgiving everyone, love for all and hatred for none. So we become clearly among those people that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam forgive them. And he said, Mushrik, or Mushahil li akhi, or Qatil nafs, or Qatil rahim, or Aql walidayh. In another narration, he said five categories. Allah will not forgive them at that night. He said, Mushrik, one associate, associate something or somebody with Allah, and his faith not pure. Second one, somebody has dispute with somebody or enmity or hatred to somebody. That's why we should have love for all and hatred for none. And the third one is qatil nafs, a killer. Somebody who take a soul, take life without justification. This is a criminal and committed a, a great crime. Without repentance, without asking for forgiveness without compensation, without coming to justice. And the next one is Qati Rahim, the one who cut his relationship with his family, with his kinship, with his relatives. He's away from kindness to parents. He's away kindness to relatives, away of being kind and good to others. And the fifth one is Aqli Walidayh, somebody who displeased his parents somebody who's bad to his parents, somebody misbehave with his parents, somebody doesn't love and care and listen to his parents and obey his parents, somebody who's not kind and friendly with his parents. Brothers and sisters, Allah wanted us to think differently. Allah sending us invisible virus so we can think differently. Allah wanted us and we don't know, and this is the most likely, to have Ramadan without mosques. Ramadan without community. Ramadan without congregation. Ramadan without having iftar together, breakfast in the sunset time. Ramadan without invitations for iftar. It's interesting. Ramadan without taraweeh. Ramadan without tahajjud in the masjid. Ramadan uh, without i'tikaf in the masjid. I'tikaf Laylatul Qadr in the masjid. Subhanallah. 
But Allah giving us glad tidings. Allah said that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala see the person who used to do something and this person has a habit of doing certain good deeds and for some reason this person couldn't do it and continue doing it this consistent regular good deeds because illness because certain circumstances like the one that we are in because of travel whatever the reason that was beyond the limitation of the person and the capacity of the person was out of the person control then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward the person same reward Allah will bless the person same blessing Allah will shower the person with the hasanat and and the blessing and love and grace and help and support subhanallah because the person used to do this intentionally sincerely and now the person prevented from doing it stopped falsely due to certain circumstances like the one that we are in subhanallah subhanallah this is a great news for us that Allah will reward us this is why we need to be now ready for Ramadan we need to be ready psychologically emotionally we need to be ready um, uh, spiritually we need to be ready mentally we need to be ready in a personal level and family level and socially as well and in terms of community as well we need to think how we can pray taraweeh but at home do the iftar with the family at home do the dua at home do the tatahajjud at home do all the prayers at home and do it for families to gather and that also for individuals single parent single fathers students single muslims they do it together they read quran from cover to cover khutmul quran they finish it at home they, they, they help each other they prepare iftar together husband and wife father and mother children everyone together and they plan their things together students of the university you may think that being single and alone and doing your worship and doing your ibadah alone preparing your breakfast alone doing iftar and suhoor alone fasting alone prayer alone being alone you don't know that there is a greater blessing in this you don't know that spiritually you are actually developing a great one-to-one -one relationship with Allah because you are getting a great position Al-Khulwa Billah wa suhba ma'Allah wa ma'al Qur'an Your friend is Allah Your friend is the words of Allah, the Qur'an And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam And I'm giving you this glad tidings The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said That seven types of people They will be under the shade of the Arsh The throne of Ar-Rahman In the day of judgment While people are struggling the judgment And he said one of them A person a person وَرَجُلٌ ذَكَرَ اللَّهَ فِي خِلْوَةٍ فَفَاضَتْ عَيْنَاهَ رَجُلْ ذَكَرَ اللَّهَ فِي خُلْوَةٍ فَفَاضَتْ عَيْنَاهَ A person that remember Allah and mention the names of Allah glorifying Allah in isolation Look at this word, beautiful word in this hadith that we never thought about but it came into our life Allah Akbar in isolation فَفَاضَتْ عَيْنَاهِ فَفَاضَتْ عَيْنَاهِ and then his eyes moved to tears his eyes فَاضَتْ means flood his eyes are flooding with tears Allahu Akbar it's a great tiding glad tiding for you that you will be under the shade of the throne of Allah the day of judgment brothers you need to we need now to prepare ourselves how to contact our friends, our families, our relatives, our parents, those one who are close to us online and by phone. We need to plan our dua and prayers for all the humanity at this time of calamity. We need to pay our zakah. We need to pay our zakah at this difficult time to the needy, 
to those people who are desperate from our relatives and our neighbors and the orphans and the those who are the widows and those who are of need we need to donate to our masjid our mosque to maintain the masjid for the coming year all these need to be planned indeed for the coming ramadan without mosques ramadan without community because if the mosque physically not there and not open but spiritually the community there and connected with each other spiritually heart together minds together communication online and on the phone together indeed brothers and sisters also i want to share with you something very interesting that this calamity came with and indeed what allah said in the quran you may dislike something and it's good for you this present and showed how muslims contributions toward managing this calamity the role of muslims and mosques and 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 community and the importance of it and in 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 um, in community and individual levels and uh, mosques you see many mosques are doing deliveries services for elderly people vulnerable people and single people at homes muslims are non muslims and you see this in the internet and you see people thanking them sending thanks and all this it's amazing isn't it and you see people are taking food to nhs people and hospitals muslim takeaways and 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 places and um, kitchens that are taking the food to emergency services in hospitals it's amazing and um, you see subhanallah and muslim nurses uh, doctors who retired they join nhs again and they volunteered and they, they are helping at this difficult time you see today the name of umar ishraq this name that came so high allah honored this person the ex executive manager of the ventilator company uh, uh, that called uh, uh, mid uh, mid uh, runter uh, mid uh, uh, medtronic medtronic the name of the company medtronic this company that they give as a charity free of a charge to the whole world the intellectual ownership and properties of the inventing their uh, ventilator machines for anyone in the world can copy it and make and do it to save lives this great names of hiba mustafa hiba mustafa the the uh, muslim lady the egyptian muslim lady that led the team in the university uh, uh, johns uh, uh, Hop hopkins this university that now they produce the quickest testing kit for uh, coronavirus imagine just imagine that a great charity contribution imagine the reward that those people they are going to get and many others look at the teaching of islam that many american professors are writing about it in magazines and well known in newspapers about the teaching of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam about the hygiene and purification rules in islam and washing the hands and cleaning and cleansing and istinja and cleaning the body and the the pollution the wudu that we do every day and and we just do it and it's given for us but it is a great contribution to the world nowadays in term of saving lives and quarantines as well and the rules of quarantines and it came from the teaching of islam and the statements of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam stay in the area if it's uh, area of infection don't leave and if you are outside don't enter it's amazing indeed brothers and sisters let me at the end of my talk indeed to remember dr adil tayyar and dr habib zidi 
and Dr. Amjad Al-Hurani and others uh, who were the first, the first to sacrifice their lives in order to save other lives. Those doctors who worked in NHS to save lives and volunteers, some of them retired already. They rejoin again, volunteering from their heart to save humanity. They saved humanity. They didn't discriminate, but they saved whoever in need, Muslim, non-Muslim. Because as the Quran said, if you save life, as if you saved all the humanity. Let's mention the name of Ismail, the first child, 13 years old, who also died in this. Brothers and sisters, many of the ulama, they believe that those one who pass away because of the coronavirus, they are in the state of shaheed, the state of martyrs in Islam. May Allah have mercy on them and all the Muslim ummah and make it easy for all the humanity. Let's also, my brothers and sisters, remember those one who lost um, a member of the family while they couldn't attend their janaza, while they, they, they couldn't be there for them, but they couldn't travel because there is no flights. Let's remember those one who are far away from their families. Let's remember one of our brothers here that his uncle died from coronavirus in London and he is here in Aberdeen. Just remember those one who have sorrow and pain and struggle and difficulties. Let's remember them in our dua. Let's remember one of our brothers here who his mom died just yesterday morning back home in Algeria. And he's here and it's very hard for him that he can't travel and he cannot attend his mom funeral. Let's pray for everyone. Let's pray for non-Muslim who are struggling at this time because they are human and we are belong to them, they are belong to us. We are all belong to Adam and Eve, and we all belong to Allah, and we shall return to him. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. Let's remember and pray for those one who are struggling for their lives in the intensive cares, the thousands and thousands of people all over the world. And let's pray for them to recover and come back to their families. Brothers and sisters, let me share with you this and end my talk with this advice to the husband and wife at home, to the father and mother, and make this the conclusion and the last word to say. Somebody sent me a joke and he said the virus has started to go down in the streets and the number of viruses goes less and less in the streets because the social distancing. But the um, cow madness illness has started at home. And I thought it's a joke. But then looking at the number of calls and how much tension and stress and arguments and issues between husband and wife and fathers and mothers and people at home, that give us warning that we have to be careful and remember the advice of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Rifqan bil qawarir Be gentle and kind and nice to your ladies your, your, your wife, your mom, your daughters, your sister and he said khayrukum khayrukum li ahli the best among you is the one who is the best to his mom or, or wife or sister or daughter or, or brother or sister or parents the one who's the best to his family and he said and this was the last advice that he gave in the last sermon in in the last sermon he said I uh, I strongly advise you and recommend you to be kind to your women the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also asked women to be nice to their husband and he said um, any lady that her husband die while well, he is happy from her and pleased with her that she have guaranteed Jannah. She has guaranteed Jannah. The, the, the wife that please her husband, 
She has guaranteed Jannah. And another hadith, um, he said that uh, if a lady did her, her prayer and fasting and kept her chastity and modesty and pleased her husband, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell her on the day of judgment, welcome to Jannah and all the gates of Jannah will open for her and she can choose any gate to, to enter from. الله أكبر إذا صلت المرأة خمسها وصامت شهرها وحفظت فرجها وأطاعت زوجها قيل لها أدخل الجنة من أي أبواب الجنة شئتي سبحان الله سبحان الله how great is this سبحان الله and and this is really a great messages from Islam to us at this difficult time so we need to think differently now indeed we need to think outside the box we need to actually Think of the good and benefits things that coronavirus has brought for us. We need to know by sure that it is the creation of Allah and Allah will remove it. And it's going to go. But we need to pass this journey peacefully and with faith and strength and confidence and more knowledge and more Iman and more good deeds. Brothers and sisters, um, at the end of my talk, I would like to remind you to pray four raka'ah, dhuhr, a prayer, today. And also to pray salatul ghaib, to pray janazah, the uh, funeral a prayer, salatul ghaib, uh, the prayer of janazah in absentia. And absentia meaning the, those one who maybe no one prayed funeral for them. Or only few people did, and indeed they are special to us. All those one who died from coronavirus, they are special to us, they are dear to us, they are our family, they are our community, they are our Muslim Ummah. They fought on our behalf in the front lines to save lives, indeed. And the least that we can do, make dua for them that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them Jannat al-Firdaus the highest rank in Jannah, in paradise. And to make it easy for their families who even they couldn't attend their janazah. And to make it easy for all their families and give them the patience and strength to cope with this musibah, with this hardship and difficult time. وَمَا تَوْفِيقِي إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ تَوَكَّلْتُ وَإِلَيْهِ أُنِيبُ Indeed, all the success that we have is because of Allah. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammad. Wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.